want to welcome you to welcome you tonight to this edition of Hopcat Presents Local Spins Live at River City Studios. I'm John Sinkovich with uh, localspins.com, website that covers the West Michigan music scene, and we're absolutely thrilled to spotlight tonight's guests because Vox Vidora certainly is one of Michigan's up-and-coming bands and a group that's really caused a buzz around Grand Rapids over the past year or so. The band's first full-length album, Promise Land, will be released on April 25 during a show at Founders Brewing. And word is that uh, this will be a milestone recording for West Michigan's music scene. This is the third installment of Local Spins Live at River City, a series that uh, showcases some of the region's most compelling artists and emerging acts. We want to thank Roy and Austin at River City, everybody here, the video team from Grand Valley State University, uh, Hopcat, uh, our sponsor, and everyone who's helped create this unique an intimate evening of music and conversation. So let's let the conversation begin. Uh, let me introduce you first to members of Oxvedora. We have Molly Bausma Schultz, Scott Schultz, Ryan K. Wilson, and Theo Ndwali. And uh, Molly, of course, is familiar to many in West Michigan as a lead singer for years in the award winning band Blue Molly, Blues Soul kind of band, and Nomad Willie cover band. Not to mention frequent, frequent guest appearances with people like Rick Chime, Carissa Wilson, and a lot of other bands and area musicians. Uh, her husband, Scott, is a multi-instrumentalist and a one-time member of Happy Hour, which is now known as Valentiger. And uh, he also happens to be a talented brewer, so I'm sure he's been testing the beer out front. Uh, Ryan, another multi-instrumentalist who's been involved over the years with a host of terrific West Michigan bands, including SP3, Scott Pelgrim Trio. Uh, Southpaw players, UV Hippo, and a guy who's uh, collaborated frequently with Rick Chime as well. Common denominator there. Uh, Theo, meanwhile, yet another multi-instrumentalist. He's also a songwriter and a music teacher who's played in bands such as Archery and The Brilliance and been commissioned as a composer by the Grand Rapids Symphony. This is a talented bunch of people in front of you tonight. So Molly, I'd kind of like to start with you. And considering the diverse background of all the people in this band, and your own experience in other groups. I'm, I'm wondering what it is in your view that drew you and Scott to form this group, and what is it about Vox Vidora that sort of distinguishes it from other bands in West Michigan and maybe other bands that you've played with? Well, um, Scott and I put this band together because I really wanted an outlet for original songwriting, and that's something I hadn't really found before. Um, I'd known Ryan for a while, and we met Theo at Lamplight Music Festival um, last year and uh, we just started kicking around the, the conversation got together to rehearse and just kind of jam and see how it all felt and instantly you know songs were just flowing from the group and so um, I guess that's unique because you know you can form a band but to have the a collaborative magic that we found is um, sort of unique I think so is it uh from the standpoint of the kind of music you guys play, do you feel like it's got its own, carved, carving out its own niche here in West Michigan, or does it reflect on some other groups perhaps that you folks are uh, influenced by? I, I think all of our influences make up, consist of the music that we're doing. Um, in terms of niche, you know, I don't think any of us are really concerned with labels, so, you know, just making music we want to make is really our main goal. Now, Scott, you know, you can pitch in here, too, as well. You know, I've read the description of the band, and it's difficult for me to sort of put into words what it is that this band is all about. But clearly, there are a lot of genres that are being reflected in your music. There's soul, there's rock. Um, What what, what do you see as what this band's direction is in terms of its music? Um, I think we we all bring our own individual influences and our own individual tastes in songwriting and everything. Um, I've never been in a band before. I don't think any of us have been in a band like this where um, songwriting is a collaborative process. So I might start an idea on piano and kind of like it, but then I think of a bass line um, and then teach that to Theo, and then Ryan fills in on drums, and that could be how we do one song, Molly sings, but then the next one, I'm on guitar, Theo's on keys, um, Ryan's on bass, you know, I mean, it's, it all kind of changes our, you know, the makeup of our instruments, but also the sound of, of each individual song. So I think that carries over pretty well. Yeah, and no, all of you are multi-instrumentalists, which means you 
switch off on instruments constantly. What does that do for in terms of either sparking creativity or the kind of music that you guys play? I mean, if you're sitting at the piano versus uh, you know playing bass versus playing guitar, uh, that's pretty rare to have everybody in the band being able to play several different instruments. Yeah, um, it was all something we were looking for. It not, um, I don't know if we knew that's what we were looking for, but um, we found it with one with each other. We before we started the band, we just said, well. I don't want to just be a bass player. I can play keys, drums, and guitar. And everybody said the same thing. Well, I don't want to be stuck behind the piano. I don't want to be stuck behind the drums. So um, we thought, well, this, is, this isn't a bad thing <laughs> that we have here. We can, we can build off of this. And so um, I think it carves out our own um, unique sound from that. Just It's a different approach to how to, how to do a band. So if, if I went from left to right here with Ryan, uh, name who your one or two biggest musical influences are. If you're going to name your favorite artist, maybe when you were growing up, who really got you into music. Uh, I would probably say Ray Charles has got to be one of them. Nice. Uh, and then um, also I'm a big fan of uh, a singer and songwriter out of Montreal named Patrick Watson. Molly? Oh, that's really tough. Um, I would say... Aretha Franklin and Ella Fitzgerald. Theo? I'm going to have to say, um, uh, I have to go with a lot of traditional jazz guys. Wynton Marcellus is a big one. Um, and his drummer, Herlin Riley, that would probably be, probably be the biggest. And then some Earth, Wind, and Fire also. Before I jump over to Scott for the next one, so with a jazz background, do you feel like that's where your training has been in jazz? And in terms of the jazz influences on this band, where does that come in? Um, I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, for me, I, I was trained in jazz probably more than any other specific style, I guess. And um, a lot of our music is built around very intricate um uh simple but intricate like and delicate parts um and i think as a drummer in particular um you learn to play very lightly and very softly and pay attention to everything you're doing um and in jazz you you learn that so i think that's probably carried over a lot into how our influences or how our music has uh, come across and improvisation as well. I imagine when you guys are working on new songs and um, and Scott, how about you? Well, who's your who? Who do you sort of cite as a as an inspiration? Um, I would say for two, uh, Harry Nielsen and uh, probably Radiohead for something a little bit wow. more modern. Wow, no, that's a <laughs> that's a diverse <laughs> duo right there. All right, let's get a feel for what Vox Vidora is all about. Uh, let, let's hear them play their first song of the night. What are you guys going to play first for us here? This next song is called Downtown Southside.
I swear I could ever hear every one of those influences that you folks cited kind of in that one song because there were so many different textures and elements and rhythmic things going on there that really made it very uh, energizing. And Molly, I've seen you perform many, many times. And the one thing about you is you cannot stand still. And it seems like there's ele electricity surging through you when you're singing and performing. What is that all about? Where does that come from? Well, um, I would say that the first time I really experienced what you're talking about myself was in high school. I sang for my high school jazz band, and I chose to do Respect by Aretha Franklin. And I had to do that in front of, like, the whole school and I was super nervous and I sat in my car hours before I had to do the one song and it was like terrifying and then I did it and something came over my body and I, all of a sudden I was comfortable and you know so I, I guess that was just a really big experience for me and um, singing to me feels really good so I guess I'm just in my own world having a good time and, and I'm glad people enjoy it so. <laughs> And for those of you that think there's something romantic going on between Scott and Molly, well, of course there is. <laughs> They're married, if I didn't mention that previously. And I have to ask, because um, is that a special source of musical inspiration for the two of you? Or in terms of you know sharing that artistic passion? Or uh, can it be a source of friction because you guys are both trying to do the same thing, so to speak? I don't know. What do you think, dear? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely friction. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing but friction. No. Um, well, it's kind of weird because we weren't, we didn't really play music together for the first five years. We knew each other. It was more after, um, I don't know, just working on a song that Molly wrote for Art Prize um, back in 2013. We just kind of got the confidence. Well, wow, we're both musicians. We could do this thing. And then. Um, Working with Ryan, we had been playing gigs, um, or Molly had been playing gigs with him um, for a while, and I joined in on some of those because he was playing keys, I was playing guitar, and um, but mostly playing covers. But uh, um, it's when we met Theo at Lamplight, and and then all of a sudden all these pieces came together. Like, well, maybe we should start a band. And Molly was writing more songs because she just won Art Prize for her category, and. Confidence levels are up, and then for me, I'm like, well, it's it's good time to be in playing music again, and um, so it just kind of all um, kind of happened naturally. But it's kind of weird. Five years ago, we weren't playing music together at all. Yeah, and, and to answer your question a little bit more, um, Scott's always been really great at supporting me musically, but you know he has his own talents and passions for music, um, and I think we just decided and realized, like he said, that. You know, we could share that on a bigger level. So, so Ryan, since you sort of came into this, there's this couple that's writing music together and doing this kind of thing. You've been, been involved with obviously music for a long time. What's your view of of Molly as the as the sort of the front person for this band and, and what what she brings to the dynamics of the band? Because people, all eyes, all eyes are on Molly when you guys are playing. Uh, well, um, I mean, Molly uh, and I played music, like Scott mentioned, um, before this group in a couple different ways. Sometimes it was just Molly and I performing um, some uh, kind of quieter jazz stuff. Uh, she came and performed with one of my former bands a few times and um, always took the energy up a level, you know. And, and as a concert goer, I love seeing a lot of energy on stage. It doesn't have to be loud and fast music, but whatever you're playing, just a lot of energy or that, that you care about it, you know. And so that's definitely one thing that Molly never has a problem convincing people that she cares about it, you know? So in that respect, she's an absolutely fantastic front person. And it's just natural. I mean, she's kind of the best looking one of us, I would say. So, so. I think that goes without saying. I would like to contest that. Yeah. <laughs> Can we put that to a vote? Speaking of beauty and relationships, um, how we, you mentioned it a little bit early on, but how, what's the songwriting process like? When you have four ultra-talented people who all have their voice in a band like this. How does the songwriting process work? Is there a lead songwriter on a particular song or is it completely collaborative in the studio? Somebody comes with an idea and it can be as basic as just three chords that we like on a guitar and we sit down and hammer out sessions and just start working on stuff. And um, 
we always record whatever we do, go home and listen to it, and then come back and work on some more stuff. But it's it really is very collaborative. I don't think we have written a whole. I've I haven't written a whole song and then had these guys learn it. It's all been a very collaborative thing. So Theo comes a lot with uh, some piano ideas, and then um, and then we did you know, figure out where to take them, the rest of us, or, you know, Ryan brings, it's, it's all kind of over, all over the board. Yeah, or, um, or we'll just be sitting <coughs> on, at our instruments, and Molly will sing like a, just a line, or, or we'll be just hanging out, you know, where we practice, and Molly will be like singing or something, and then, you know, Ryan will go to the keyboard and like play what she was singing, and it becomes a keyboard part. And then I hop on the drums or something, put a groove to it, and Scott puts a bass line. It's very, it can go all kinds of different ways, um, but that's kind of how it yeah, goes. And to add to all of this, you know, very nice compliments. I appreciate them, but um, you know, I write the lyrics for these songs, but these songs wouldn't be what they are without these guys. So, um, yeah, it really is collaborative, and I I couldn't do it without them. So. And you guys are recording your recorded your new album at uh, Tommy Schichtel's Goon Lagoon Studio here in Grand Rapids, and it's coming out in April. Uh, how long of a process was that, and what was that process like? I mean, this is the first studio album you put out. You did put out a live album recently. Um, yeah, we put out a live EP with Roy at River City. Um, he actually came over to our living room and um, recorded us last last spring, and um yeah made us sound amazing for our living room just recording in our living room but um and the songs were brand new the songs were brand new and um but when we went to make a record um with Tommy's name had been thrown around a lot um and we just wanted to check out his studio and as soon as we got there it's the place is like a museum it's just a wall of guitars and technology that's 60 years old but um you know was the absolute top of technology 60 years ago. So as musicians and nerds, we just kind of fell in love with it. And it's been a really amazing process because um, uh, these songs were all kind of put together and we all had these dream ideas of what sounds we wanted to make, dream guitars we wanted to play on certain tracks. So we were actually able to play all those things because Tommy owns all that stuff. So um, um, it was just, it was, the most fun record to make. Well, let's hear like a magical fun house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> magical fun house. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's hear a couple of these songs. I'm gonna have you guys play a couple more songs here, and uh, and these I imagine are on the new album. So yes. You guys this is we're so lonely. And here the multi instrumentalist shuffle goes on, switching instruments.
I saw love. So all four of you have been part of West Michigan's music scene for quite a long time. You've collaborated with a lot of different bands and musicians um, during that time period, and this is considered a very supportive community here when it comes to music. So I'm wondering how that's helped Vox Vidor in its development, either through the people you've played with or, or, or whether the scene itself has been supportive in the sense that you know that whatever you do is going gonna, is gonna to get some support from the fans. Well, you know, you're you're an example, John, of somebody who supports local musicians, and you know, it's people like you who have made it possible for our music to get out a little bit further, at least in the West Michigan area. You know, uh, WYCE has been really, really good to me, and I'm sure all these guys too. Um, you know, fan base is real. People that support you and come out to all your shows, those are the people that keep you encouraged and make you want to make the music. But yeah, I definitely think there's a collaborative network of people in Grand Rapids. It's, you know, I'm sure if we lived in a, di a bigger city, um, you wouldn't see as much of that. So um, for
for some reason, West Michigan has that. And I don't know why, but I appreciate it. It doesn't seem as competitive, but it yeah. seems more like if you guys are doing something, uh, the other musicians want to be part of it and support it. I mean, Rick Chime, we've talked about him a couple of times. Um, are there any bands in particular that you feel have are, are part of that, that you know, you're going to be performing uh, at Founders uh, coming on Saturday night with, with, with Rick? Um, are there other performers you think that have really done a good job of sort of helping you guys do what you do? Uh, from my perspective, uh, many of the members of the Grand Rapids Symphony, and tagging on what you said earlier, like, you know, a lot of my friends who I grew up with learning music from, I learned from members of the symphony or a lot of the jazz players around here. So, um, and um, also a lot of the, the church community too around here. There's a lot of great music in, in the church community around here. So it's just a really strong, supportive, collaborative community as a whole. Um, and there are plenty of other bands outside those groups too and, and musicians who have you know, been incredibly influential to me um, personally. And I know that brings you know, my 25% to, to Vox with Dora, so. Um, people like Edie Evans Hyde have connected me to like the West Michigan Jazz Society. You know, and people don't necessarily consider me a jazz singer, but you know, I've got, I've had the opportunity to sing in front of that crowd and you know, People from Wheatland Music Organization, I've, I've been in that crowd. So, yeah, I think it's a pretty open group of people here. I mean, it's small, but it's it's a good one. So I'd like to open it up to questions for the audience. And if you have a question to ask, let me know. We'll get the microphone to you. Um, this is your opportunity to sort of ask them about what they're playing or uh, what their future is. So uh, who, who would like to ask a question? I'd like to know what you see as your dream, where you want to be five years from now. Oh, five-year plan. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, um, I think, well, personally, my goal is to continue making music with these guys. And um, our hope, I think, as a group is to share our music with a large, larger audience. Um, we'd love to tour. You know, I'd love to tour the United States as well as Europe and South America, Africa. Um, so, and, and to play in nice venues where things sound so great and you're taken care of, you know, <laughs> that's all you can really hope for, I think. Personally, I want to make mu music videos that are compelling and inspiring and just uh, connect with the people who are listening to our music. That's, that's what I want, what y'all want. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, it's like almost, almost every part of what I want out of this is here the fact that we get to play music and hang out together and we all kind of agreed when we got together we want to make music that we like and we're we've been doing that we've been having a lot of fun doing that yeah i want to be able to tour and make a living off this too that'd be that'd be the goal um <laughs> but uh as long as i can still keep playing this music that's and hanging out with these folks that's like all i really want to do so Speaking of, speaking a little bit about touring, um, what's going to happen after this album comes out? Have you guys set up a tour at all inside Michigan, outside Michigan, or is that something that's uh, down the road? Yeah, down the road. Um, yeah, can't, <clears throat> we're we're in the final process of mixing and then mastering, um, and then from there we want to see if this record has legs. We we feel that it does because it's um, we we knew. We had some good songs that we wanted to record. We had no idea it would sound as good as it does, and um, I don't know. It, it's um, we're really proud of this record that we're putting out. So um, see where it goes and and push it as much as we can and show um, try to put Grand Rapids on the map. That would be amazing if we could do that through music. All right, who else? Uh, there's a lot of amazing musical festivals in Michigan, and I was wondering if you guys had any favorites or something you would like to play, or at the national level, too, if there's something that you guys think would be amazing to play at. As far as the national level goes, uh, 
I've been to five Lollapaloozas, so that would be a personal goal of mine to go <laughs> yeah. play down there. And, and um, you know, I thought a lot of times over those weekends when I was down there, it's usually in early August, um, I thought a lot of times how it would be nice to be up on stage instead of in the crowd, even though I love being in the crowd and, and I love that part of it too. You know, I, as much as I love playing music, it's I almost equally, I don't know how to, which one I like more. I love listening to music, you know. Um, so Lollapalooza as far as a national level. And then Coachella, I think, would be a really interesting one to play too out in California. Um, those are two of the bigger ones that, that I really think uh, would be a lot of fun to play. Just the people you get to rub elbows with and, and, um, and the experience that you'd have meeting and talking with other musicians, I think, would be uh, a lot of fun for me personally. And in Lollapalooza, I have a lot of personal experience with. And as far as uh, in the state, you know, Electric Forest, uh, Wheatland, Buttermilk Jamboree, Hoxieville. Harvest Gathering. Yeah. All those places, you know, we're a pretty fresh band, so we haven't played any of those festivals, so we'd love to be there. Anybody else? So as multi-instrumentalists, how do you decide who's playing what on what track? I mean, when you guys switched up, um, you know, who, who made, where did you guys come to the idea that you needed to play drums and that's, you needed to play keys? It actually is something that, uh, that's a great question. It's, it's something that, I was thinking about earlier when John asked a, a previous question. Um, something we talked about early is communication and how we communicate while we're playing, how we communicate when we're not playing, you know, via text or email or wh however, how we need to work on communication all the time. And that's actually one really nice thing about being in a, in a band with other multi-instrumentalists is you don't have to say, you know, Theo, if, he, if he's thinking of a beat, he doesn't have to say, play boom, boom, bap, boom, boom, bap. He can come over and actually play the beat and show me what to play. Or if, you know, Scott has an idea for a bass line, that he wants someone to play. He can actually play and then move on somewhere else. So it really, being able to communicate in that way really makes our songwriting efficient because instead of, uh, instead of just not having that um, barrier between us about not being able to articulate what you want someone maybe to try, um, is, that really helps us a lot. So really there is no equation for who's gonna play what. In fact, there's been times where um, you know, someone started on one instrument and then ends up playing a completely different instrument. Uh, and, and they bring their own kind of idea to the part, but also, um, you know, it just may be better for someone else to play because Scott and I play bass very different, you know, and Theo and I drum very different, and those two play keyboard different, and Miley plays keyboard different. So it really, um, what we talked about before we went in the studio and when we were writing is, what's going to be the best for these songs? And, and so it really has nothing to do with he has to play the bass or he has to play the keys or, you know, whatever the case is, it's always what's going to be best for the song. And then that's what we go with. Yeah. And to add to that, a lot of times, it, a lot of times it ends up being, um, whatever instrument we were sitting at when whoever presented the idea, you know, uh, that's how it goes. But, and then maybe we'll switch or whatever. Um, and I was, uh, I didn't really say this to any of them when, uh, when we started and they wanted to be multi-instrumentalist band and I was kind of averse to the idea at first, but I felt like we should try it out um, because you see other bands try to do it and it, or I've seen uh, other people try to do it and th they're trying to go for something gimmicky and really all we want to do is just be able to not be stuck behind certain instruments. So, and not allowing um, ego to get in the way and all that kind of stuff say, uh, Ryan, I don't really want to play the piano on this. Could you, <laughs> could you play that? It's that kind of thing. <laughs> Anybody else? It's your last chance. <laughs> Ask what you want. All right, let's hear another song. When do I run away? Next song's I Ran Away. Stay. I had to stop. 
start all over again When I was a child I couldn't believe folks could be so cruel When I was a child So would you folks consider your songs dark, lonely, loving, upbeat? It see, there seem to be elements of all those in there, but I'm wondering how you view the textures and the, and the feeling that these songs give you. Well, you know, some of the songs um, instrumentally, melodically might sound happy, and obviously the lyrics might feel different. So um, and we're really in, into that, into tapping into... You know, making a pretty beautiful sound that could be light and upbeat, but still, you know, the lyrics are, whoa, I didn't think she was going to say that, you know. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I definitely think our music is dark, but I think that's mostly because it's honest. It, it doesn't have to be in a bad way, you know. It's just real. And, and having been to your shows, I know that people consider it sort of a danceable, too, that there's there's an element to it, and maybe that's part of the movement that you've got on stage, but, but you want to make music that people move to. Oh, absolutely. Um, I love to dance. I dance at home all the time. Right, guys? We like to get down, John. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's good. That's good. Um, well, once again, I want to thank you guys so much for being part of Hopcat Presents Local Swims Live at River City Studios tonight. And thank you for being here to share this evening. You can hear more of the band later this week when they play Mitten Brewing tomorrow night and at Founders on Saturday night. And before they go, we're going to have them play one more song. And what's that going to be? Let me be. And first, before that, I want to say thank you so much, John, Local Spins, and uh, Roy at River City. Thank you so much for hosting this event and always advocating for what local artists are doing. 
Thank of you. course, folks, don't forget that April, put that on your calendar, April 25 is the CD release show for the new album. It'll take place at Founders Brewing Company. Please you, be there. And you can keep your <laughs> and you can keep your eye on localspins.com. Over the next couple of weeks, we'll have the full podcast, the video, a story about the band. Um, you can relive these moments and pass it on to friends that couldn't come tonight. Um, and uh, here we go. Vox Fedora. This is Let Me Be.
Yeah. Vox Medora, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming. Have a safe trip back home, and, uh, and thanks for being part of a very special evening.